Bonjour, guys. Bonjour. La classe se lève. Et numéro un, question words. Blink, est-ce que tu rentres chez toi à une heure ou à midi? Qui a fait ça? Ça va, moi. Oui. Mm -hmm. Quand? Can you guys get a little bit closer? Can you read it? Quand est-ce que? Oui. Tabitha? Oh. À, uh -huh, à une heure. Une heure. Uh -huh, une heure. Une uh heure. -huh. Oui, très bien. So, quand is when? Good. But if there's a time, what should we do? There's an exact time. At 12 o'clock or at 1 o'clock? What would the question be? À quelle heure? Good. At what time? Okay, so if I have a time, if I have an exact time, let's pose the question, at what time? À quelle heure? C'est bon? C'est bon. Numéro deux? Qui a fait numéro deux? Um, oui, Naomi. Tu veux lire? Pourquoi est-ce que vous criez? Criez. Criez. Parce que vous êtes fâché. Vous êtes? Vous êtes fâché. Très bien. Pourquoi? Always with parce que. Qui a fait numéro 3? Oui? Combien de hamburgers est-ce qu'il mange? Oui. Millions? Très bien. After combien, what do we always have? De. Mm -hmm. Combien de filles? And is everybody correcting things mm -hmm. so that you can have a record of it? Combien de filles? Uh -huh. Quatre? Oui. Oh. Qu'est-ce qu'elle? Une salade, très bien. Merci. Qui a fait cinq? Oui. Qui danse avec Brad Pitt? Uh -huh. Excellent. Qui danse avec six? Oui. Comment est-ce que nous allons? Nous on allons. Uh -huh. On autobus et non. Très bien. Mm -hmm. On autobus et non. Et sept. Très bien. Qui um, uh, vous vous êtes fâché? Est-ce est que? So what is what is qui mean? Who? Uh huh. And vous êtes fâché. What does that mean? What's vu mean? You guys are angry. Would it make sense to no. say who you guys are angry? What? Do you yell a lot? When? when. when. Good. Oh. When you guys are angry, do you yell a lot? Uh huh. Quand vous êtes fâché, est-ce que vous criez beaucoup? See how that works? Mm -hmm. Très bien. Qui a fait huit? Oh. Mm -hmm. um, pourquoi? Ridicule, oui, très bien. Et neuf? Qui a fait neuf? Oui. Est-ce que nous filmons la salle de bain dans la cuisine? Non. Ridiculous. <rire> Ridicule. Ridicule. Oui, très bien. Ridicule. Et dix? Qui a fait dix? Oui. You weren't here with the pronunciation thing, but do you remember that the E, E, S, E, and E, and T, it's just silent, okay. good. Yeah, it, it's not the same, it's just silent. Okay. So, S, get, and what would you do after the S? Remember, H's aren't pronounced. Oh, good girl. Who is que Les toilettes. Les toilettes. Ou dans une maison. Très bien. Excellent. 
So any questions about question words? How to form them? With ESCA, is it good? Uh, you guys have seen in Pauvre Anne a question like, you could say, est-ce qu'il va, is it that he goes? Or you could use inversion. And you put the verb first, mm -hmm. and then the subject. You see that all throughout your questions, right? Mm -hmm. So this is inversion, and these are with the question words in ESCA. And they both mean the same thing. We do the same thing when we say, uh, are you? It's just inverted, you are. So this way or with inversion. Those are two ways that you can ask questions. Uh, voyons. Immediate future. Très bien. Qui a fait numéro un? Uh, je fait. Tu l'as fait? Très bien. Uh, Aujourd'hui, je fais du jogging. Mais demain? Uh, je vais jouer. Jouer? Jouer. Uh -huh. Au tennis. Okay. Très bien. Merci, Naomi. Qui a fait numéro deux? Très bien. Taylor, uh, we are going to eat pizza? Oh, I'm sorry. Aujourd'hui, nous mangeons des spaghettis, mais demain... Uh, nous allons manger. Mm -hmm. if, you have a, mm -hmm. if you have a new right here. Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce that? Uh, nous allons. Oui, très bien. Nous allons manger. Nous allons manger de la pizza. Très bien. Qui a fait trois? Naomi. Alors, aujourd'hui... Antonio Banderas regarde la télé, mais demain, il va regarder un film. Il va regarder un film. Très bien. Numéro 4, aujourd'hui, qui Naomi Ah, très bien. Aujourd'hui, dans, euh, vous dansez beaucoup, mais demain, vous allez dormir. Ah, uh -huh. vous allez dormir. You said it right. Did you write this I did. <laughs> Good. I, I have ALL on my paper. Good girl. So this is kind of the tricky one, guys. You know, ALLE has two L's in it, so that'll help you remember. Okay? Vous ALLE. And AVOIR has a V in it, so AVE. That'll help you. Et qui a fait numéro 5? Euh, voyons. Aujourd'hui, je ne marche pas à Nashville, et demain? Ne vais pas marcher à Chicago? Uh -huh. Je... Je ne vais pas, how do you pronounce that? Marche. Marcher. Marcher. The ER can sound like a long A sound. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Marcher. Très bien. Et qui a fait numéro 6? Alors, Naomi. Aujourd'hui, Sarah euh, Barreil bar, joue de la guitare. Demain? Elle va jouer. Très bien. 7. Aujourd'hui, il boit beaucoup de café. Demain, il... OK. Oh, What does uh, that go with? Il, uh -huh. What the easy form. With, um, What form does that vous. go with? Good girl. It's always vous with the easy the form. Easy. Well, this is an irregular verb. Oh. So let's think about it. Je vais, tu vas, il va. Nous allons, vous allez, ils, ils vont. Okay? And it might help you, it has a V in it, and so do these guys. Okay? So, vont. Oui. Ils vont boire. Et numéro 8. Euh, Aujourd'hui, nous travaillons à midi. Demain. Très bien. Nous allons... Nous allons dormir. Yeah. Do you see why it wouldn't be dor? Yeah. Dor means sleeps. We are going sleeps. Okay. okay. We are going, what is it in English? Just say it for me. We are going, what is this word? To sleep. To sleep. Good. And the little IR at the end or the ER at the end is our equivalent of to. What, what's that called, class? What, what form of the verb? Infinitive. Infinitive.
Good. So see, when you have two verbs, you conjugate the first one and you don't conjugate the second one. Numéro 9, aujourd'hui, il trouve un million de dollars, mais demain... Ah, uh, moi, but I was looking at eight and I put it on nine. Okay. So I'll fix it real quick. Okay. Sure. Oui, il va trouver. Très bien. Et numéro 10, aujourd'hui, Rosie O'Donnell crie beaucoup, mais demain, elle... Oh, bon. Oui. Um, ne va pas à l'école. Elle ne va pas à parler. Elle ne va pas parler. Très bien. Elle ne va pas. So, she puts it around the verb that's conjugated when there are two. Very good. Any questions how to make the immediate future, the future proche? No. Good? Good, great. Good girls. Mm -hmm. Good girls. Mm -hmm. Mais si, OK. Let's look at the fair expressions. Uh, and you had these in your um, Quizlet, right? So what's, what's to go boating? Faire du what? To go boating? What's the word for boat? Bateau. Bateau. Uh-huh. And that's how you say go boating. Faire du bateau. Faire du bateau. And all you have to do is change this according to who's doing it. Oh, am I doing the wrong one? Sorry. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. That yeah. is that is at the end. I Thank you, like, sweetheart. I was like, oh. Yeah, that is at the end. Uh, this one is. Let's see. Uh, the first one had fair in it, so I thought it was the fair one. Ce soir, je fais du jogging. Oh, okay. But last night, I did karate. Okay, got it. Alors, ce soir, je fais du jogging, mais hier, et qui a fait numéro un? I actually did them all. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm just going to call on different people, just so you can feel it. Go ahead. Uh, hier... Uh -huh. So let's open up a little bit. Can we open up a little bit? Good. Uh, et numéro deux. Let's just go down the, the line here. Uh, Tabitha, ce, ce jeudi, nous mangeons des spaghettis, mais jeudi dernier. Avant, avant mange. Yeah. What should, what should the past participle look like? Manger. Manger. What's missing from that? Oh. Yeah, what kind of an accent is that? Aigu, good. Now, do you guys realize that this is completely wrong? This word is completely wrong if it doesn't have the accent. Okay, mm -hmm. just making sure. So you have to have your accents there. Okay. Et numéro trois, uh, Taylor. Voyons. Cette semaine, Antonio regarde la télévision, mais la semaine dernière, il. il a Oui, il a regardé un film. Continue. Naomi, numéro 4. Ce week-end, vous dansez beaucoup, mais le week-end dernier, vous... Avez dansé. Hein? Vous avez... Vous avez... Dansé. dansé. Très bien. Et numéro 5. Aujourd'hui, je ne marche pas à Nashville. Et hier... Je n'ai pas marché à Chicago. Uh -huh. Can you give me the subject there? Do you see the subject written there? Uh -huh. Je, je n'ai pas marché. How do you pronounce it? Oui, très bien. Je n'ai pas marché. Et numéro 6. Aujourd'hui, Sarah joue de la guitare, mais hier... Uh, Naomi? Uh, elle a joué. Elle a joué. Et numéro 7. Taylor, ce matin, ils boivent beaucoup de café, mais le mois dernier... Class, what le mois dernier mean? What's uh, le mois? Month? Yeah, uh huh. Last month. What's l'année dernière? The last year. Good. Il a. Il a. Uh huh. Wait. So if this is il boive, if this is plural, mm -hmm. would we say? They has drunk. No, it's uh, ils ont. Uh huh. Ils ont bu. Ils ont bu. Uh 
Uh huh. Now remember the B U is like yes. this one. Everybody clench your teeth. E U B. Ils ont bu. Ils ont bu. Très bien. Et voyons, Tabitha. Euh, cette année, nous travaillons à midi, mais l'année dernière, uh -huh. nous, nous avons travaillé. Oui, très bien. Uh -huh. Et numéro 9, Tracy. Euh, Aujourd'hui, nous étudions la biologie, mais hier... Oui, étudier la biologie. Et numéro 10, cette semaine, Rosie a lu un livre, euh, pardon, lit un livre, mais la semaine dernière, et Naomi? Elle a lu. Uh -huh, très bien, elle a lu un livre. Any question about the formation of the past with regular ER verbs? Take off the ER and have an E accent aigu. And these are all conjugated with what? Avoir or être? Avoir. Avoir. Très bien. Any questions about that? Okay, Lil. What is that? Um, this, this is all the forms of has, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what is the form of free and true? Well, I think I know the form of true. It's, it's B O I. Avoir. To drink, uh, lire, to read. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, why did they change to be you and L U? Those are irregular verbs that are listed on your weekend sheet. Mm -hmm. So let's go over some of those because you do them all the time. Mm -hmm. So lire becomes lu, boire becomes bu. I want you to look in your blue book and tell me on what page can you find that resource of past participles. Can you look at that? What are some more irregular past participles that you might use? Cinquante-six. Cinquante-six. Voir is vu. Good. Yeah, and devoir is due. Devoir is due. What does devoir mean? Um, had to. Has to. Has and do means had to. Mm -hmm. Any others? Um, prendre esprit. Prendre esprit. Très bien. J'ai pris. And uh, écrire. Écrit. Uh -huh. Écrit. Très bien. Dormir. And dormir. Is what? Dormi. So you guys, you guys just say, I have slept. I have. J'ai dormi. J'ai dormi. I have written. Mm -hmm. I have read. I had to. J'ai dû. I saw. I took. I'm sorry, this is there and I meant to put it in. So you good with that? Those are just irregular verbs. They're also conjugated with avoir. Good? And do you have like a little thing for remembering them at all? Do you just have to, the thing that I have for remembering them is constantly think about what you did the night before and you'll keep using these over and over. Okay. Okay. So usually during a longer semester, at the time we learn about these, we just keep saying, every time we have class, what did you do last night? What did you do last night? And you guys would continually hand in. And you guys did your little past tense weekend thing. Mm -hmm. Just keep looking at that. I think you used all of these. Okay. C'est bon? Okay. So let's look at this, that, these, and those. You've got masculine, feminine, plural. So this or that, these or those. What is the feminine form of this or that? Set. Set. Masculine form? How do, you, how do you say the masculine? Oh, can you 
Can you widen so that the guys can see the board? How do you pronounce this class? L. Le. Le. How do you pronounce this? D. How do you pronounce this? S. S. Good. Feminine, masculine. What about plural? Uh -huh. Are you allowed to pronounce that S? No. no. It rhymes with le. Uh -huh. Sounds like se. What if it comes before a vowel and it's masculine? Le. Le. E. Te. C. E. Te. Très bien. Mm -hmm. C. E. T. C. E. T. So the first one says voiture. What should we have up there? Should we have ce voiture? Très bien, cette voiture. Uh, next one is ordinateur. It starts with a vowel, and whoever did this, cet ordinateur, très bien. Ce restaurant, masculin, très bien. Ces portables, pluriel, très bien. Numéro 5, uh, école. What about école? What does that start with? Good. Is it masculine or feminine? feminine? Good. Should it be this one or this one? This one. Très bien. Très bien. Et numéro 6, jupe. Cette jupe, féminin. Très bien. Amour, masculine. Cet amour. Toilette, pluriel, ces toilettes. Good job. Cet homme, start to the vowel, and it's masculine. A ces cafards, these cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Très bien. Any question about that? Uh, something cool that uh, Tex pointed out, even though this can mean this or that, okay, you, you never know, do they mean this or that? If I wanted to say this car as opposed to that car, I would say cette voiture. Cette voiture si, or cet ordinateur là, here and there. And it's another thing that reminds you of um, some of the uh, older speech that happens in the hills of Virginia. This here computer, that there computer. Si and la. Okay. If you want to distinguish between the two. Any questions about this, that, these, or those? Uh, voyons. Now we've got passé composé with être. So I went out. Je suis sorti avec un vieil homme. Très bien. Je suis sorti. And I said I was feminine. Good. Nous sommes restés uh, to stay. What is to stay, class? It's not sortir. Yep, rester. Nous sommes restés chez nous. And I said it was feminine. Okay. Et numéro trois, uh, she arrived. Elle est arrivée. Très bien. Quatre, you plural feminine got up into a, a, a plane. So if it says plural and feminine, what should we do over here? Good. Anything else? And an, S. and an S. Bravo. Très bien. Et numéro 5, they went to the pool. Ils sont allés. Tell me if that's perfect. Uh -huh. What kind of accent? Aigu. Aigu. Très bien. Uh -huh. See, see all these accents, monter, arriver, rester, and this is an IR verb, so it doesn't take, you know, that, it's sorti. you don't have an extra E on number five because it's not feminine. That's right, that's right. And Tracy, it's the same reason that we added, you know, an E to vert if, we, if we're talking about a feminine green thing. Right. Yeah, so we're going to do the same thing here. Tu es resté, and I said that the U is masculine, and good, so they didn't add anything. C'est bon?
And so here are the fair expressions. Il fait froid. Good, it's cold out. J'aime. What does j'aime mean, class? I like, I like. What comes after I like, even in English? I like do boating. I like to. I like to do boating. What does that look like? What form is the verb to do? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. what, what form is that? How do we do the infinitive? Good. So I like to do boating is j'aime faire du bateau. How about I like to dance? Well, no, just I like to dance. Oh, j'aime faire du bateau. Mm -hmm. Très bien. I like to eat. Très bien. How about I am going to eat? I am going. Okay, I am going is, what is I am going? What verb is that? What's aller? Good. Is it any other verb but aller? I am going. It's just aller. Mm -hmm. It's just aller. So how do you say I am going? Good. Okay. Now remember, this means three things. What three things does it mean? I want you to tell me. What are the three translations in English? Um, I'm, going. I'm going. I do go. I, I, go. I just I go. I go. So don't be fooled when you see I am going. It's just one one verb. Je vais. Okay. So how would you say I am going to eat? Je vais manger. Oui. Je vais manger. And that's the immediate future that we did just right over there. Remember that over there? Good. Alors, numéro 2, j'aime faire du bateau. Est-ce que est-ce qu'elle porte un manteau en automne? Oui. Yeah, because it's cool out. Il fait frais, très bien. Uh, numéro 4, est-ce que vous to do the housework, okay? The fair expression to do your housework is Le ménage. Le ménage. Okay. This is a fair expression, to do the housework. Faire le ménage. So the question is, are you doing the housework over the weekend? What's the vous form of faire class? Okay, careful now. Faire is an irregular verb. Let's conjugate it. Je. Okay. Tu. Tu fais. Yeah. Are we allowed to say that? Nous faisons. Good pronunciation. Vous faites. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Ils font. And what four verbs do you need to know for the exam? What four irregular verbs did I list on there? Let's say them together. Aller. Aller. What have we been tested on? Pardon me? Sortir. No. Uh -uh. Faire. No. Yeah. Faire. <laughs> Aller. Faire. You look at that. Avoir and etre. Avoir and etre, yeah. So be sure and go over that list. Remember I gave you guys a list? Mm -hmm. What to study for the exam. So be sure and go over that. Et vous faites le ménage, oui. très bien. Tu fais, yeah, tu fais les courses, to run errands or do shopping, très bien. Is housework. Tu fais les courses. Uh, nous voulions aller à la piscine, mais il, il fait mauvais, très bien. It's bad weather out. Uh, they do the cooking. Elles font. Très bien. Uh -huh. Elles font la cuisine. Et huit, je fais la vaisselle. Do you notice that they do just singular? La vaisselle. Elle fait. Is this uh, huit? Oh, no, it's je fais. Je fais la vaisselle. Très bien. Et neuf, on préfère l'été parce qu'il 
fait du soleil. Très bien, il fait du soleil. Let me make sun out. Et numéro 10, euh, nous pouvons, we are able to do a walk. Good. We are able, nous pouvons. If there's one verb already here that's conjugated, the next verb has to be in the infinitive. Good. Nous pouvons faire une promenade. C'est bon? So, do you see how there's two verbs yes. here, Taylor? Good. And then, uh, okay, yeah. Good. Same, that's why this one is like this too. Yeah, mm hmm. Because two is I like. Okay. J'aime danser, j'aime manger, je vais manger. We could also say, je peux aller, I am able to go. See how that works? Yeah. C'est bon. Any other questions before we give you the quiz? Good? Okay, guys. La classe s'assied. Go ahead and have a seat. Prenez un stylo. Yeah, this is just dead, dead time. I don't even know if I can do this in an hour. De Grémont family, and this is actually the house. So you have to steer clear of the, of the cameras. So, Noel and Eric lived in Paris in this house, and Eric worked for um, the Ministry of Interior. He worked in the White House, what was the equivalent of the White House. And he worked for the gentleman who was in charge of all the police in, the, in all of France. His name was Poniatowski, and he put Giscard d'Estaing in power, who was president at the time. So Eric was, you know, the right-hand man. Yeah. And, he, and this family was very much like the Kennedy family. They were already affluent. He had uh, three brothers and a sister. They were all doctors or lawyers. And Noel came also from uh, a, a wealthy family. So this was an opportunity for me to actually be with the bourgeois, you know, the, the bourgeoisie in France. So they had three little boys, Léonard, uh, Nice, et Samuel, and this was their house. Um, it was just two rooms on two rooms on two rooms, and here was the um, dining room, kitchen, and here's their cave. It had a, uh, a dirt floor, and he had hundreds of bottles of wine uh, ordered from all around France. Um, they had no television, of course. They only had books in the library. Um, bath right beside Samuel and Niels' room. Guest room, my room. And I'm going to show you on the pictures that out of my window I could see the Eiffel Tower. That's, cool. That's how close I was to downtown. Didn't you those bottles of wine go make 
Walker. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have Walker then. <laughs> um, I was, you know, every day I went to the Sorbonne, the University of Paris in the morning. The kids went off to school. Um, I was, I don't know, number five or six in the long line of nannies. They had never had an American nanny before. Um, how it happened was my parents, there was this guy in my parents' church who had invented the airbed for burnt people. And he started doing business with uh, France. And Olivier, who is Eric's little brother, never went to college. You know, he came from a wealthy family. He didn't have to do anything. But he came, became an entrepreneur. And he built up this business of medical supplies uh, internationally. And he started doing business with um, this gentleman in my church. And I was just graduating from college. And I was you know, wondering how I could live abroad for a year. And we said, let's invite this French guy over. Mm -hmm. So we invited him over. And as luck would have it, he was a hoot. He had taught himself English. He was very savvy about the world. And he was like, I have a brother and sister that live in Paris, and they have nannies all the time. They would love to have you. So he arranged it all. Oh, they have three darling little boys. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So I got on the plane with Olivier. We went over, had a, a fantastic time, got there, and these kids were monsters. They had been raised by nannies. They were spoiled brats. But and so, thus began my adventure. And I'll, I'll start showing you pictures, but you see how beautiful they are, these beautiful boys. And uh, you'll notice that Eric has glasses and enormous ears. I have to say this. In France, the tradition is if you have enormous ears, your parents clip them and fold them back, just like dog ears. And when Niels and Samuel were older, that's what they did to those boys' ears. Just normal, just what, I don't know if they do it today. Mm -hmm. This was 40 years ago. But yeah, so these, this is my family. And let me, let me start with the, with the pictures and show you guys. It was 1976, and I just graduated from college. <laughs> and you know, you guys, you know what, what, what came out when I was in fourth grade? The sound of music. <laughs> and so I, w when I thought about being a Nancy, nanny, I, of course I was thinking of that. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it was until the three little boys showed up. <laughs> so let's see. Would it be OK if we turn off one of the lights? Would that be OK with the, with the cameras? And let's see. Jesse, could you turn off one of the lights? Or, or is this OK? Shall we stay with this? It'd be great if, if you can see with this. It's better with the light on? No, this will be all right. No, I mean, I, I want it to, for you guys, not for me. Is it better with the light on? Um, what do you think, John? This is actually pretty good. Yeah, OK. Pretty good. So notice that de Grémont, they have a de before their name. And that's a sign of aristocracy. And Noel was quick to point out that they did not buy that de, as many aristocracy did back <laughs> in the day. They came from a family who was a, a minority in France. They were not Catholic. They were Protestant. And she had many stories to tell me about their ancestors fleeing from the Catholics as they came to their houses. And of course, she had a great, 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 great aunt who climbed up the chimney on all fours so that the soldiers couldn't get her. So those kinds of things, adorable. Love those stories. So here they are sending my mom a little thank you note, wishing her happy Happy New Year, and giving her a little English translation. So they pick me up in Paris, and they take me to their little country home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Bonne Maman is the grand dame of the family. She lives here all alone in this enormous house. Her husband has since passed away. Behind is the pool, and here is a house for every one of the boys and girls that are part of the family. And notice that each house is rather large, and each family has their set of servants. <laughs> yeah. The youngest brother lives on the farm and manages it. And notice that here are the tennis courts. And they're not just regular tennis courts. They have a clay bottom. And if you've ever played tennis, you know that that's really good. Right across is the lake, of course. 
and here are the cows and stuff like that. Um, so Eric says, Shelly, shall we go for a little walk? Here are the monsters, okay? Nice et Samuel. And the first day I was there, you know, the fireplace is probably as big as I am. They were playing in the fireplace, and they managed to take some fire out and set fire in the living room. So I knew that was a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. Here's Leonard, precious Leonard. When I got there, he didn't speak. You know, he was just at that. He was one year old, and uh, when when I we would enter, Noel was teaching me the um, the routine, and we would enter in his little room, and we'd be on all fours, going back and forth, banging his head on the crib. So he constantly had a boo boo right there, <laughs> and he had a band aid right there. But she would come every in every morning and say, Tata, tu veux manger? You hungry? You want to eat? So eventually, I noticed that he just started repeating the song. We'd come in and he'd say, uh, uh. So it, you, you know that French is beautiful and sing-songy, but it, it was becoming clear to me as humans, you know, this is a physiological thing. This is, you know, not just memorizing words. So Eric says, Shelley, let's go hunting. So he gets his fusil out, he gets his rifle out. Look at those knickers, aren't they adorable? <laughs> so of course, all we hunted were cows. And then he took me to the, their église, their church, right on the premises. They have their own church where they can have, you know, little church ceremonies. And this is where uh, Papa is buried, his father. I'm up in the loft looking down. Look how big it is. So then we go boating, and you see Eric's big ears. And Eric <laughs> had a condition, um, had diabetes, and it was so bad that his eyes used to bleed. And it was also so bad that he used to faint. The, and uh, what you're going to learn about this family is French people are so hardy and stoic and um, minimalists, and they don't share a lot of private things. And he wouldn't take care of himself. He'd work like a dog, get in at 8.30 at night, and he would just not take care of himself. He'd fall down on the floor, and, and Noel would start yelling at him, you rotten, you didn't, you know, eat right, you haven't taken your insulin, and she would be yelling at him, and she'd stick uh, uh, sugar in his mouth, and he'd wake up, and we just proceeded in that manner, and I got to say, it, it disturbed me one time when we were driving, and she was looking at him saying, have you taken your insulin yet today, and he said, nah, and uh. she, she opens the glove compartment, takes out sugar, and starts stuffing it in his mouth. So there was never a dull moment. This is where I had my first meal. You see how big the chimney is. So after my introduction to the family farm, we just, it was, I came in the summer, so the kids were out of school. We came back to their little villa. Now Paris, it's very expensive to live in Paris, and most people live in an apartment. But we had a private home, which is unusual. And you see how large it was. That's pretty large for how, how tiny Paris is. Um, this consisted of about 200 homes, um, 200 families. It was surrounded by a fence. You couldn't enter either with your car or a pedestrian unless you had a key or unless the little man that lived in this house came up and opened up for you. This was the Gaudien. So I, you know what skeleton keys are? You know how heavy they are? I had about five of those that I had to carry around with me all the time. And Noel said, Shelly, you lose these and you know, you gotta go back home because we don't have any we don't have any duplicates. So we lived in a private villa. And here's here's me looking out my window, guys. See the arrow? That's the Eiffel Tower. So I'm so I'm up at the top in my little room. And here we are. You see Niels in the window? That's his room. And right here in the middle you see that winding thing right there? There's a winding staircase. And it, it's actually, you know, concave. And you see WC, water closet? There were, there were actually two bathrooms on either floor. And they had wooden toilet seats and a pull chain and this kind of paper that was like wax paper for the toilet paper. Yeah, good times. <laughs> So here's this big, rich family. And they don't spend their money on the kind of things we do. They spend it on um, you know, objets d'art, original art objects, and travel, 
and um, good books. So here we are. This is where we eat every day. It's a tiny wooden table. Right behind Noel is the stove. She just grabs the food and slaps it on the table. Right behind uh, Samuel, and this is where I sat, Samuel et moi, is a little refrigerator about the size of a college refrigerator. Why? Because they buy their stuff fresh every day. So a family of five and me, six, we just went to the uh, boulangerie every day and got our little baguettes. I would go and get fresh meat every day from the butcher. And even he would see me on the street and he'd say, Mademoiselle, I haven't gotten your order. What are you guys going to eat tonight? And I'd say, oh, I forgot to tell you. We're going to eat. And we ate uh, lamb a lot. Lamb is expensive, but it was so good. Anyways, oh, I forgot. We need, you know, five pieces of lamb or something like that. He'd say, vous n'êtes pas sérieuse. Of course, we called each other vous. Everybody was calling each other vous. You're not serious. You're not well organized, you know. So it was so cool. They, they would chide you like a big brother or sister if you didn't do things properly or, you know, the way they were done in France. So you see. Did you vouvoyer the parents? Yes, we all vouvoyed each other. Even though I, I, know, I caught Noelle once. After, Noelle was very funny. She was very, um, vouvoyer means to call other people vu. It's like our thou, okay? And, and they were a, a, a um, somebody from the upper class, so they did call their servants. And I came to understand that I was a servant, <laughs> and they called me Vu. But, but we, we would have so much fun that Noel inadvertently called me Tu a couple of times, which, which just warmed my heart. I thought it was adorable. But you know, then she would go back to Vu. But you can see, she's a, she's a really uh, hearty gal. She's messy. She always had a cigarette hanging out of her <laughs> mouth. She was always playing with the boys. She was very tomboyish. She had done her studies in uh, interior design and architecture, so she could she actually designed some of the things in the house. She um, maybe had some private commissions, but she did not go to work every day. She and Eric were both volunteers. She volunteered to teach Sunday school every week, which for the French people at this time, every Wednesday school was out for children to get their religious um, training. And she would teach Sunday school on Wednesdays. And that meant they went, the children went to school on Saturdays. So Saturday morning, they would go. And then Saturday afternoon, they would be off. And Eric actually, despite the fact that he was enormously busy, he volunteered on a suicide line, I think, once a week. So they, they were very philanthropic, very volunteer. Um, Oh, wait, they were, there we are in their living room. I was going to tell you uh, an eating story. So I told you Noel was cooking one day and, or one night. And, uh, and let me just say that, you know, the house was a mess. It was centuries old. It was very dirty, very hard to keep clean. Uh, Madame Malumbres was a, a Spanish woman who had brought her, her whole family over to France to try to make money. And they lived in a tiny one-room apartment. And she came to our house every day and cleaned up. So every day, she'd be mopping the floor. Well, by night, it was really dirty. So Noelle grabs the poil, the pan of fish that she's frying. She brings it over to the table. And in bringing it over to the table, they slide. They all slide off on the floor. So I watch her, in amazement, pick them up and put them on the other side and fry them again. She brings them over a second time, they fall on the other side. <laughs> she brings them over a third time, and people proceed to take it out and put it on their plate. Well, I am green. I'm looking at this stuff on my plate, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to get a solution here real quick. And so I'm peeling off the fried junk, and I'm eating the fish inside. And the kids are saying, whispering to their mother, Mom, why is she not eating the best part? And so Noelle looks at me. And she's laughing, and she's saying, oh, look at the clean little American. She's green. I know she's going to go back to America and tell everybody how dirty the French are. <laughs> so I mean, she had a great sense of humor, very self-effacing, always telling me, Shelley, you know why we invented perfume, don't you? Because we were so stinky. <laughs> so she is, um, here is fantastic original art from Paris in their home, all over the place. And what y'all? Here's the baby bumping his head against the thing. <laughs> he was so adorable. So I potty trained him. I taught him to speak. And uh, 
sometimes I would, that we would be playing with little animals, and I would just say, I, I want to teach them a little English, so I'd say, this is a tiger, this is a tiger. So one time the parents came home and they said, Shelly, what have you been teaching our, our children? And they said to me, they're saying, they're saying stuff like ta gueule, which means your ugly mug. <laughs> so they're mispronouncing tiger with a French accent. <laughs> so here's bath time. And I tell you, bath time. Boy, that was hard to get started. Um, <laughs> these guys were so, they were just a bundle of energy and they wouldn't do anything I, did, I wanted them to at the beginning. And I don't know if you ever saw uh, The Miracle Worker where um, you know, Annie Sullivan is teaching Helen Keller. Helen Keller not to pick up the food and eat it off of other people's plates. She ends up closing all the doors and the girl throws a tantrum and, she, you know, Annie Sullivan makes the parents get out of the room so she can do something. Well, here we are. I'm saying, okay, guys, it's bath time. Time to take your clothes off. And they're like, no, we don't want to. And they're rushing for the door. So I close the door. I sat against the door. And they're screaming and yelling for mom. Mom, help us. Shelly won't let us out. And Noah's just, she's just downstairs saying, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Shelly can do whatever she wants. So this was bath time. This was the beginning of bath time. And eventually, you see, they're kicking off their clothes. They're having a good time. And they're putting their clothes right here on the bench. And you see how decorated their, their room is? Art all over the place. They were very expressive and artistic. And they were all about, you know. And at six years old, uh, Neil started taking solfege, which was uh, music. He started you know, learning to play the flute. Everybody needs to take solfege as soon as they can you know, to start learning music. So Noelle brings me into the kids' room, and she's telling me the routine. And she says, say, every, every day when they get home from school, They'll put their clothes over the bench, and then they'll take their bath and blah, blah, blah. And, and they'll do this every day. And then she laughs and she said, our nanny last year was from Germany, and she just couldn't believe that the kids wore the same clothes every day for, for all week long. She, they, they, evidently, they changed their clothes every day in Germany. <laughs> and I said, Noel, you know, sort of we. Yeah. And, she, and she just laughed. And just went on. So this, these are the rouliers. Roulier, Monsieur and Madame Roulier lived next door and they were the gardien. They were the gardien of the villa. And he would come over and open the door and do different things. He was also a factory worker and she was the chef in the White House. Yeah, she had a chauffeur and Eric had a chauffeur and um, Loïc was their son. He was only 16. And he came over and started asking me to give him help with English. So he came over one night, and um, we were going to start our lesson. And I said, very stupidly, you guys will know better, I said in French, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. And he said, and he looked a little perplexed, and he said, OK, uh, I guess I'll go home. And I said, no, you can wait here. He said, well, will you be a long time? I said, no. So I'm up there, and I realized I use salle de bain, which is for the bathing room, mm -hmm. and toilette is for the toilet. So he just thought I was upstairs taking a bath. <laughs> oh, so I was going to tell you, look, this is my first tarte aux fraises. I found a cooking school in France, and I went to it, and it started from zero. We went down the street to the market. We bought all the food, and we went back up and cooked it. This thing took five hours. The shopping, the preparing, and the eating. It was a five-course meal every day for, you know, I don't know how many weeks. And the teacher was, it was like science class. You had to do certain things to make things rise, not to let them fall, to make them, you know, taste in a certain way. And so, of course, I invited the roulier over as my first guests. And here we are over at their house. And after I spent a year there, my mom came over and visited us, and they very sweetly invited her over too. So there she, she looks like she's had a few drinks. <laughs> so one thing that saved me and kept me sane was I went to the Cardew Club. The Cardew Club took place at the Anglican Church every Wednesday night, and it was, uh, it was a haven for nannies. All these gals and guys have decided not to go to college from England. They are British, they are uh, Scottish, Irish. They decided, and they, they're from a certain class that probably uh, 
there were probably people that didn't go to college after high school. They would come over to the continent and be nannies and work with these different families in Paris. And some of these guys and gals were working with very famous people. And so we used to share our stories and you know how awful the people were, or how awful the kids were. And, and sometimes there would be something like, oh, Sir Lawrence Olivier called us up the other day. Mm -hmm. Some people lived with actors and actresses. Some people lived with um, famous diplomatic people. So guys, this is my first ballet. I'm sorry you can't see it better, but I was just overwhelmed. This was Swan Lake. The troop was Bol uh, Bolchoy troop from Russia. And it was, it was so magnificent that I went back. When, when my mother came uh, to visit me, we traveled to Italy and we saw uh, ballet in Italy as well. And you know, people were throwing roses onto the stage. But it was just, it was so um, moving. It, it really, it, it moved us to tears. So what I was going to say was I came back and I took ballet for a year as a 22-year-old, and it didn't work out so well. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard Color My World. It was big in the 70s. This is the group Chicago. This is one of my favorite groups. They happen to be in Paris. Here I am standing on the top of you know, some table or chair, getting down and taking as many pictures as I can. Yeah, I was rocking on. So if you remember Olivier, who lied to me and misled me and said to me, the children are adorable, Shelley. He invited us down to southern France. Montpellier is where he lived. It's in the south of France. And he happened to live in an enormous chateau. It was, this is not even his chateau. These are the next door neighbors. His chateau was built in the 12th century. And he invited an entire Spanish family over from Spain, a, a mason, to uh, slowly rebuild the, um, his chateau. So part of the, the Spanish family lived in one part. I can't even remember how many rooms there were. I got frequently lost in the chateau. But anyway, we stayed there for the Christmas vacation. We all went down on a train. And um, I here's Olivier. And I'm saying, Olivier, you are so going to get it for misleading me. We spent, he spent some time with the kids, and he was like, oh, God, yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> so to get away, I, in my youth, I used to have some horses. I think I told you my dad was in the military. On the Air Force base, there was a big stables, and it was a good way for children to spend their time. I had a horse. I loved it. And I thought, oh, I was calling up every place, does anybody have any horses? So I would get away from the family and go on horse rides with this, this guy. And look at this. Look at this, you guys. We went up and down these hills all the way over here. And it was freezing. It was miserable. But I wanted to be away from the kids. <laughs> so at Christmas time, um, I was so glad I was there at Christmas. It was awesome. The night before Christmas, everybody goes to an enormous mass. And we went to uh, Les Grottes uh, caves, caverns that have stalagmites and stalagmites. It was beautiful. You see this? This is the white picket fence. And behind that is the priest. He's giving mass. And behind him are the choir members singing. And after that, we go back home, and we have midnight dinner. Fantastic. And the kids go to bed. And, we, and outside the room where there's the big Christmas tree, guys, they had real candles, real lit candles on the Christmas tree. So outside the door, they put you know, the shoes for Father Noel to put um, the gifts in. And so that was awesome. Then in February, we went skiing. Mont Blanc, you know, Mont Blanc is in between, you know, on the, co on the border, Switzerland, Italy, France. And they would go there every year. Eric and Noel were good skiers. And the kids took lessons, too. So I did, too. I had done a bit of skiing. Um, I went to a university that was close to North Carolina. So I had done just a bit, but just a bit you know, to do snow plowing, <laughs> just to stop myself. I didn't have any technique or anything like that. So I went to official classes. And this is my ski instructor. And one day, I, was, I went down the wrong Thing. You know how you have beginner hills and expert hills? I went down the wrong hill. 
So I got in trouble and I went into a ravine, I was like up to my neck in snow. My skis were broken. And I, do you know a téléphérique is a seat where two people sit and they go above? I don't know what you call it in America, but ski lift. Yeah. Oh God, of course it's a ski lift. So <laughs> the, the the French people were way above me, and I'm I'm down there floundering in the snow, yelling "Au secours," which is help to my succor, you know. Oh, so cool, oh, so cool. And I can hear him up there laughing, saying, look at the little American. She doesn't know how to ski. So guys, in a little while, a bounty hunter came. It was a ski guy that was trying to help people that you know, had had trouble. He was divine. It was fantastic. Here we are having lunch after a hard day of skiing. It's so beautiful out. Look, we can wear our t-shirts. OK, so after. The year was over. As I told you, my mom came and visited. Uh, I went back. I became a teacher. Noelle and I kept in contact. And Eric went from the undersecretary of state to his own precinct. He was the mayor. This is their new home. It's compared to that one. Yeah. This is their new home where they um, you know, entertain dignitaries and stuff. And Noelle and I continued to write each other, write each other. She was so great. Send it. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, uh, that was an old ski picture. Here are the boys growing up. Aren't they precious? Growing up even more. Aren't they? Uh, the middle one, Samuel, looks like uh, Olivier. And I think uh, Leonard on the right was the youngest. He is so beautiful. I think he looks like Mel Gibson. <laughs> they went uh, frequently to Bali, other parts of the world. And aren't they? They're just adorable. She, is, she had such a great sense of humor. And uh, he was very proper. Here's their home. Does it not look like Dr. Zhivago? Wow. So 10 years later, I was an exchange professor in uh, Grenoble. And um, this is where I stayed. It's, th it's amazing. Yeah, look at that. So in 97, um, he got married. Um, and before that, this is the oldest son. And oh, let's see here. So we're writing each other, we're writing each other. And one day I get this letter, um, and something has happened to uh, Leonard, the youngest boy. He was 19. And I'm over this, but <laughs> I'm going to let her read this. It's, and it's, it's a beautiful story. And I want you to, I'm sharing it with you because, wait a minute, this family was like the, um, the Kennedy family. Um, June 13th, 1996. Dear Shelley, um, Leo fell from a cliff Monday 30th of May and died at once from the fall. He was just 19. We mourn and hope, remembering strongly how full of the joy of living he was, and we try to pray to be ready for our meeting one day. Do pray with us. Do remember the lively little boy you cared for years ago. He has been buried just nearby our own house, 100 kilometers south from here. And we felt thankful that he has been living here with Eric and me since last September. He had been at a boarding school for the previous years. Emil, Sam, Eric, and I feel devastated, thankful for the years of happiness with him, and full of hope since we believe, we know, that Leo is in the joy and peace of God. Loving thoughts to you three. Yes, sorry. Funnily, I wrote in English as I thought of USA. Yeah, so of course that was hard to get over. And what, what you don't know about French people, but maybe you're getting this from the book, um, you know, they're very private. And, and also, um, most of them are atheists. They're, you know, they, they practice Catholicism, but they just don't talk about faith and stuff like that. It was very amazing for me to get this, um, to have her share open me, openly with me like that. Um, and I wanted to just give you a, 
an opportunity to look at French handwriting. <laughs> I had to type that because it's so impossible to read. So we would handwrite each other these letters uh, you know, on this light paper. Um, when, my, when I lived there, it took my letters two weeks to get to my mom and my mom's letters two weeks to get to me. So uh, that happened, I think, in 93. And then in 97, you know, we continue to write each other. Um, Niels got married. So here's his wedding picture. There are the parents, the proud parents. And then I didn't hear from her anymore. And I got invited to be the ambassador for Nashville. Nashville is a sister city with Caen. Caen has five sister cities, England, Germany, two in America, one other one I can't remember. But they, ha they have a yearly festival, and they invite about 50 different countries. And the sister cities are put together and asked to, I was asked to bring you know, music from Nashville in place of our mayor, who of course doesn't speak French. So I was the little representative, and every night, oh my god, we had so much fun. Um, one of my duties was to eat with the other dignitaries. So one evening, and, and these, are, these are the guys from Africa. They're so adorable. These are men. They're dressed up as women, and they're showing us their fertility dance. <laughs> Aren't they precious? So as I say, one of my jobs was to eat with the dignitaries. This is some king in Africa. That's like the mayor of Paris. And I'm sitting next to him, and you know, I just do goofy things like, hey, do you know so-and-so? You're from Paris. So I'm saying, you know, just joking. Oh, I was a nanny here 20 years ago or 30, I can't even remember. And uh, I said, do you, do you know Eric de Grémont? And he says, yes, I went to school with Eric. Well, the reason that's not so weird is because if you work for the government, you go to l'école nationale, ENAC, a, a person who goes to the école nationale, it's like going to Harvard. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all our uh, politicians went to esteemed schools and got a good education, for free, of course, um, they all went to uh, Ina together, and they were in the same class together. And I said, oh my god, this is amazing. I said, I was his nanny, and I haven't heard from Noel in years. What's happened? So that's when we learned that Eric had passed away. He had diabetes uh, very seriously. And for a while, he was doing um, dialysis. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he passed away. So I finally uh, got in touch with Noel again, and she wrote me in 2007 and said, I've bought a vineyard in southern France. I have a family living on it that takes care of the winemaking for me. But what's up with you? And I said, I have a son now. Um, I take students over to France. I took them over to Amiens, which is about an hour north of Paris. And I said, I'm going to be there this summer. And she said, awesome. She said, I am going to be <laughs> riding across Iceland on horses but I will be back in Paris while you're at Amiens. Why don't I come up to Amiens and we can have lunch together? So it was awesome. We had a great reunion. She got to meet my son. Um, it was like 30 years later. And uh, so Niels is like a dentist. Samuel is an architect. And you know, life just goes on. So there you have it. That's my precious family. Aren't they awesome? The yeah. kids got better with age. Pardon me? The kids got better with age. Yeah, yeah. they did. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, I came to understand those spoiled little brats, you know, they made it. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I hope that what you read in the book and what I've been able to tell you today helps you understand what a, they're really emotionally, psychologically, intellectually bright, strong people that regard us as, you know, their little brothers and sisters, and they want to help. They, they're constantly wanting to us to help us learn things about the world and uh, know things about ourselves and read their literature. And we do owe everything to the French. They did a lot. It, oh, listen, guys, when you go over there, 
they are your best friends because of what we did in World War II. They cannot stop talking about it. I was just so touched about, you know, we were riding on a bus once to go to Normandy. I didn't even know anybody on the bus. They said, there's an American on the bus. We've got to sing. And we all started singing, I don't know, patriotic songs. And, you know, they started to tell me stories. And it was just beautiful. It's so cool. So I have to stop now. Um, I have to give you the university evaluation. I'm sorry. So uh, uh, could I ask you to administer that? Anne is going to go out in the hall. Cameraman, um, I want to, because I'm not sure you're going to be here Friday, the class, the observers, and I want to present you with this gift and a card of our appreciation for everything you've done. Let's give them a big hand. So, Mitch, I mean, uh, Ty, you can open this. Wow. Yeah. You can record. Ty, get closer to the mic. Say what? Get closer to the mic. Get closer to the mic. This is awesome, you guys. <laughs> You're, you guys are awesome. Well, this is a really hard gig to record, isn't it? You can't stop filming. We all depend on you <laughs> to make us look better. We just can't merci, merci. Merci. You know, mer no, merci. You. Yeah, we just can't merci you here. enough. That's great. Thank you all very much. Thank yeah. you. That's awesome. Bravo. You Thanks, think guys. I could say that after two years. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> so there are three jars of homemade jelly in here. You oh, guys nice. choose your own, your own flavor. I'm old as so I get to choose. <laughs> Thank you. Bravo. You guys, let me ask you. Would, would it be okay to go out in the hall um, with uh, Anne? She would like to just say as a teacher what, what she's learned or what she has to say about this, maybe mm -hmm. for, you know, about 10 minutes or so? Yeah, that'd be fine. In fact, I was wondering if you got time, we could do a few, leave your mic on, we could do a few stand-ups. Right. Oh, actually, she'll need the mic. Yeah, she'll need the mic. I can come over someday. I okay. can come over there. <laughs> 